Hello everyone, Denise here. Today we are doing the stitch for the Paying It Forward Friday for December 2022. And I will be showing you the stitch uh, flat this week. I am going to use Premier Just Cotton Yarn. This is from uh, Dollar Tree and it is uh, 104 yards, 96 meters, 2.1 ounces or 60 grams. This is 85% cotton and 15% polyester. Uh, it is a medium four and it does call for an eye hook, but I am going to use a G plus hook because I stitch better with a smaller hook with this yarn. So we are going to start with the foundation chain. Uh, we are going to chain in multiples of two. This is the color sage, by the way. So usually with my tutorials, um, I usually have a problem with my yarn dragging across the edge of my desk. I have since found a bowl, which is adorable. So that is going to be my, at least temporary, hopefully, solution to the problem. I'm going to put the yarn in the bowl like this. Just work from it that way so that I don't have to put it in the bowl. I have a punch bowl full of uh, glass rocks, uh, glass like you'd put in um, flowers for a vase. They're from Dollar Tree also. Uh, I have that on the floor and usually I will put my yarn in that and work from it down there. But it does drag across the side of my desk so it presents a problem for me so I am going to try it this way. Okay starting with multiples of two I'm going to do a slip knot I'm going to do about 26 chains. That's 26. Looks long, but it will shrink up when we start the stitches. And you can make yours as wide as you want. This is 26 chains. And then we will be working back the other way in uh, some double crochet. So we'll take some off. So for row one, we are going to put two double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five. Two double crochets. And if you hate double crochets, do half double crochets. It does not matter. But I think that it works best with double crochets. Some people do not like them. It's okay. Then we are going to skip the next chain and put two double crochets in the next one after that. So skip one, two double crochets. Skip one, two double crochets. Skip one, two double crochets in the next. So at that uh, first stitch, you were going to repeat that. At that first stitch, you did turn, you did pull up. So we did shorten it by about three chains there. So just remember that when you're chaining for your foundation row, that you want to make sure that you're keeping that in mind so you're not getting your project the wrong way.
Okay, we're down to our last stitch here. We are going to put a double crochet in the last chain. Okay, so that is your row one. Pretty simple. I'm going to go on to row two. We are going to chain three and turn. And we're going to skip our first two double crochets. So one, two, and then we're going to put two double crochets in between these two right here. So skipping one, two, and putting two double crochets in the space between them. So you're not working into a stitch, you're just working into that space. And now all the way across this row, we are going to put two double crochets in the middle of our previous rows, two double crochets. So two double crochets in the middle of your previous rows, double crochets, all the way across until we get to the end. Once we get to the end of our row two, we are going to skip this double crochet and put a double crochet in this chain three from our previous row. Okay, so that is row two. We have two double crochets together on the first row, and then the second row we are putting two double crochets in the center of those previous double crochets. So row three, we're going to chain four and turn. This counts as a double crochet and a chain one. So we're going to skip the first two double crochets. So this double crochet and this double crochet. And now we're going to put a double crochet cluster in between these two. So this last row, we went in between the previous two double crochets. This row, we are going to put our cluster stitch in between last rows, two double crochets. So how we do that is yarn over, put your hook into where you need to go, which is between those two double crochets, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up your loop, yarn over, go through two. You'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all four. Now we're going to chain one. And we are going to put one of those cluster stitches in between each of our double crochet sets. So we're going to do one here, we're going to do one here, we're going to do one here. All the way across. Okay, so continuing on, we will yarn over, go in between the two double crochets right here. Yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, go through two of those loops. Yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up your loop, yarn over, go through two of those loops on your hook. Yarn over, go into the stitch, 
or space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two. You have four loops on your hook, yarn over, go through all four. I'm snagging a bit on something. Yarn over and chain one. I think I hooked up on this and creating a snag. Okay, so go in between the next two double crochets that you did on the previous row. So if you lay out your work, you'll see them quite clearly. You'll be working here, 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 here. Just like you did the previous row, you went in between those two. So yarn over, go into the space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two, repeat that again, and again, until you have four loops left, left on your hook, yarn over, go through all four, chain one. I'm gonna continue that all the way down this row all the way across. Put a double crochet in your last chain three, top of your last chain three from last row. Okay, we have rows one, two, and three. I'm going to move on to row four. Row four, we're going to chain one, turn your work. I'm going to put a single crochet in this first double crochet we just made. I'm going to put a single crochet in this chain one space we just made from last row. And now we are going to chain two. And single crochet in each of the chain one spaces that we have in between our cluster stitches here. Chain two. Single crochet. Chain two single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, all the way across. You hear sounds in the background that is my daughter playing on her switch in the living room. Although I'm not sure you can hear it. You can probably hear my clock ticking though. Put a single crochet in that chain. Remember this chain four was uh, a double crochet in a chain one. So it's going that single crochet is going to go in the chain one and then you need a single crochet in the top of that chain three there okay so that is our row four now we're going to do row five we're going to chain three and turn our work chain three counts as a double crochet we're going to put two double crochet 
in each of these chain two spaces we just made. which will start the process all over again for our repeats. Two double crochet in each chain two space. So for this pattern, you will repeat rows two through five until you have the length of your project finished. which for a washcloth will not be very long. But if you're working this for whatever else, a blanket or a scarf or what other flat projects you would like to do, you would just continue rows two through five until you got to the desired length. double crochet in your last stitch. So that is through row five. So you will repeat row two, three, four, and five until you get to your length. And you should be starting to see the cluster stitches versus the double crochets that are together, which is quite beautiful. Uh, it does remind me a lot of the tulip stitch, actually, and um, I was going to show you how I made a cardigan for my mother-in-law one of these days, and I was using the tulip stitch. So this is not the tulip stitch, but it is very similar to it, actually. Um, if you take away this top row and this bottom row, that pretty much looks like it. Uh, or flower stitch. I mean, there's probably a million names for that stitch as well just a combination of stitches that makes it look like a flower when you're changing colors. So you would repeat row two again, and then continue on three, four, and five. So row two, if you remember, we chain three. That counts as a double crochet. So we're going to turn our work, and then we'll skip the first two and put two double crochets in between. It's a very easy pattern to memorize. And uh, I'm calling it perfect, the washcloth that I'm making here because I think it is perfect for a washcloth. It has just enough of, it has just enough open stitches. The stitches are open enough to where once you are done using it, it will, um, it will dry up quickly is nice for a, a dishcloth in particular. You can also change colors on different rows if you'd like. Uh, Self-striping yarns would be beautiful in this as well. I was working up some Bernat Baby and I'll show you that in just a second here. Although the Burnett Baby yarn I'm not in love with. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I picked that up at Joanne and I'm not, I'm not in love with that yarn. I'm getting spoiled using nice yarns and um, that one's very rough on my hands. And although, you know, part of that is me because it's winter and I am more dry than I usually am. Um, we actually are really behind in precipitation. Double crochet in that last stitch there. For row three, you would chain four. Remember that counts as a double crochet and a chain one. Turn your work. 
you're going to skip your first two double crochets and then you're going to put the um, cluster stitch in between and cluster stitch is yarning over going in the stitch yarning over pulling up your loop yarning over going through two yarn over go into the stitch or space yarn over pull up the loop yarn over go through two yarn over go into the space yarn over pull up the loop yarn over go through two you'll have four loops on your hook you will yarn over and go through all four and then you'll chain one and you'll do that in between each of the double crochet stitches all the way across so yeah the um for a net blanket yarn, I was excited to use and make a baby blanket, but I'm not excited anymore. It, it made me sad. And I, I have used it before. I don't remember having a problem with it. Um, and maybe it's just this batch. Sometimes you get balls or skeins of yarn that are just, they're not up to par with other ones that you buy. I especially get that with Red Heart super saver some super saver is amazing it's soft and nice and then others is just like what the heck happened so it might be that um i don't know i i haven't bought it for a long time so maybe that's the way it is now maybe it's always been that way and i just don't remember it but it's tough to go back to uh, yarns that don't feel good in your hands once you have used yarns that are. It's like anything else, right? Once you have tasted excellent food, it's hard to go back to something that's not as good. Just life. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not dissing the yarn because half of it is probably me in my hands and how dry I am all the time, but it is pretty. I'll give it that. I do like the colors in it. So I am debating on whether I am going to finish it or not because I'm not enjoying it. Not that I should enjoy everything I do because, you know, life. And then we put a double crochet in the top of that. That would be your chain three. Okay, and then your row four, remember we're gonna chain one, we're gonna turn, then we're gonna put a single crochet in this first double crochet we just made. That loop seems too big. Then a single crochet in this chain one space we just made. We're going to chain two. Put a single crochet in between each of our cluster stitches. Even this yarn, um, the Just Cotton by Premier, this stuff is way softer than that Burnett baby. And if it's for a baby, Hmm. Maybe it needs to be washed first. I, I would like to wash the yarn before I use it though, I guess. That's not going to happen. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Finish up this row, and then I'll show you row five again. But you probably already got the hang of this because it is, it is pretty simple. single crochet in the top of your previous rows chain okay and for row five we're going to chain three count as a double crochet kind of turn your work and then we're going to put a uh, two double crochets in each of the chain two spaces so it's a very easy pattern not hard to remember i mean you could even 
jot it down on a piece of paper so you can keep track of what one you're on. You will have two rows that look like V-stitches stacked on each other, and then you'll have a row of cluster stitches. And then in between that, you have your chain two row. So yeah, it's pretty easy to remember. And you can look at your work and know, hey, I'm on this row. No problem and get to work on it. I love stitches like that. You don't have to sit and count and wonder. You just look at your work, read your work, so to speak. This seems like a very kitcheny color, this sage. It's actually a little bit Christmassy with my hook. Okay, so I will lay my work down and look at it and decide how many more rows I want to do. I'm thinking probably one more set of rows two through five because this is not big enough for a washcloth in my opinion. I think I have one on there that's wrong. take a look definitely definitely one more set of two through five because that is not big enough but I will grab my my blanket over here and show you what it looks like the yarn is actually quite beautiful it is huge yarn inspirations Burnett baby sport it is tested for harmful substances as well. It calls for a G-hook. I believe that is what I was using on it. It um, It is so rough and I don't know if it's always been that way. It's a light, it's called Baby, Baby Baby Ombre, I guess. Baby Baby Ombre. Acrylic 9.8 ounces, 1004 yards. That's a lot. Yeah, it is, it has been dragging across my skin like nuts. Last night it was really bad, but I have incredibly dry skin. Um, if I don't take care of it two, three times a day with lotion and uh, treatment and cuticle cream and all that good stuff uh, it it becomes unbearable but this is what it looks like in this and I do think it is really pretty super duper pretty very uh, baby very Eastery very nice I don't know I, I don't know well I'll, I'll have to keep you informed if I do anything with that if I finish it or what I do with it. I mean, I'm at a point where I don't have very much done. I could rip it out and, and gift the yarn. I don't know. I do not know. So uh, with this washcloth or dishcloth or spa cloth or whatever you want to call it, uh, you would repeat row two now. So you would chain three, turn your work, and you would skip the first two. Remember, or skip and skip and then we're going to put two double crochets in between there what well, looks like a v-stitch but it's not technically a v-stitch it's somewhat similar to what we did last month but with different stitches
So I am going to repeat this row two, three, four, and five one more time. And I will meet back up with you when I am done so that I can talk about if I'm going to edge this. So I will be right back. All right, so I did not do row five. I stopped at row four because I have a square here and I don't wanna go over that. I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. You can continue on, make yours as large as you want, but I want to make mine a square. I also think that row four is a good row to end on because of the single crochets and the chain twos make it easier to finish and edge a product project um, easier than than the other stitches so I'm gonna go ahead and edge this in single crochet and how I will do that is I'm going to chain one and turn my work whatever row that you ended on just go ahead and put a single crochet I do three single crochets in the corner. That's to get the edge nice and rounded. And then I'm going to put a single crochet in this next single crochet I have here because I ended on row four. And then I think I'll do one single crochet in the chain two since we are not doing double crochets in them this time. And then a single crochet in each of the single crochets in between. And then once we get to the edge, as with most projects that I do, single crochet edging on, I just put the hook in where it feels comfortable, not struggling, making sure I have roughly the same amount of stitches on both sides, not too many, not too little. And as always, you can count and make sure you have the same on both sides if you like. Or you could put whatever edging on this dishcloth you choose. I put a three in the corner here. Then down the edge here, a good rule of thumb is two to three single crochets in each double crochet stitch. For me, two is good. And then one at the top here. I, I'm literally just going in where the hook feels okay. Just want to make sure that I'm pretty even on my stitch count on both sides. But it does not need to be perfect as long as it is not affecting the shape of your cloth. You're probably going to hear my clock soon, so don't be startled. It's almost four o'clock here. Uh, I have it covered up for the most part with crocheted stuff, so I don't even know what bird it is, but I'll let you know if I know when it, when it uh, chimes. Into the corner here. I'm going to put three in the corner. That works out pretty good. And then along this bottom here, this was our foundation row. 
I am going to put uh, the corner. I'm going to put a single crochet here and there just to make sure that it is not too many stitches because the foundation row can get a little wonky looking sometimes. It's going to end up looking a little sloppy because of it being finicky to work into. And this bowl is working out pretty good over here. three in the corner. Working on this last side. And this is the same as the other with the double crochets on the sides. Held up on something there. This cloth would make a good gift. If you don't know what to give somebody for holidays, for presents, um, maybe somebody is hosting a party and you're invited and don't want to cook and they don't really want you to cook um, you don't know what else to bring a nice gift would be a couple of washcloths dishcloths just says thank you everybody will use a washcloth even if they think it's too pretty they'll put it underneath of a plant or something they will use it for something. I think it's kind of nice to keep one handy when I, uh, I used to dust the screen on my work computer because I don't want chemicals on it. So I just would dust it off, slip stitch into your first single crochet. And then snip off. So there you have it. If you want to block it, you sure can. Um, I usually don't block my dishcloths, washcloths, unless I am giving them as a gift and it matters. Um, I usually don't. But this is a couple of sets. If you have watched my channel, you probably recognize how I do my washcloths. I usually put two contrasting colors together and then uh, put them, stack them, fold them, stack them, and gift them like that because I think it is beautiful. So it doesn't matter what washcloth or dishcloth that you are making, you could still package them that way. Good way to use up uh, ribbon as well. So then I would just weave in my ends and be done. And ta-da, you get a perfect, just perfect washcloth. I uh, will be coming out with a shawl pattern using this stitch because I, I like it a lot. I, I love cluster stitch and I also love double crochet. So it is a win-win for me and I like creating things in them. It, uh, it looks great in most yarns, I would say. And uh, yeah, so look for that tutorial, the shawl tutorial. It will be a V-shawl or a triangle shawl. So I will be showing you the stitch in the round next Friday. So this is your stitch for flat projects for December 2022. And I hope you enjoyed it. 
So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And until next time, guys. Bye.